Okay, so I love Shadow of the Earth Tree. I think it's awesome. I've been playing it degenerately over the last month, and I'm sure you guys have too. And for the first time since its release, I actually went back and started playing the main game. And while doing so, there's just this weird feeling I have that I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe I'm alone on this feeling, but running around the lands between after so much time in the land of shadow just feels weird almost like a disconnected feeling. I knew going into it that Shadow of the Earth Tree wouldn't affect the main game because Miyazaki said so prior to its release. He also said that the map size would be the size of Limgrave and we all know that turned out to not quite be the case. So I went into the main game feeling like there has to be something changed in the lands between depending on what you can do in the Shadow Realm. And as far as I can tell and have researched, there's nothing. I get it, they're meant to be totally separate realms, I understand the lore aspects as to why nothing in the Land of Shadow can affect the Lands Between. Queen America clearly went to great lengths to make sure this can't happen. But that doesn't stop us, the player, from going in and out of these realms at will, so it feels strange that we can't be that factor that can bring up the Shadow Realm's existence into the Lands Between. Like, it just feels off that we can't talk with Gideon, who's trying to accumulate all knowledge possible about what we've found, which we can do with pretty much anything else in the game. So this video is going to be going over a bunch of ways I would have liked to have had the DLC affect the base game that would negate this weird, disconnected feeling I have. There's going to be no order to these ideas. I don't even have a script for this video and won't be using my narrator lore voice like I usually do. Hopefully you guys enjoy a video like this. And if you do, let me know by subscribing, liking the video, all that good YouTube stuff. And I'll try to make more videos like this along with the heavily edited lore videos in the future. So let's get started. So first things first, I think it's really weird that we can't interact or even walk up to the Gate of Divinity after defeating Radon and Mikola. Not being able to do so feels really off-putting to the ending of the DLC. Even not having anything happen, but just getting a golden view of the clouds or something like that would be enough for me. And if we could interact with the gate, it would be interesting to potentially get more information on Merica, the Outer Gods, the Greater Will, even maybe a Placidisax time warp that tells us more information through a cutscene, or better yet, actually going back in time like we do with Placidus X to maybe fight Godwin or talk with Godwin before the Night of Black Knives or America during this scene in the trailer. I just feel like something was missing here at the Gate of Divinity besides just the ending of the boss fight. And speaking of the boss fight, I really feel like it should have been three phases. Keep the first two phases exactly the same, but maybe have a third phase, like an easier phase against just Mikola himself. Like he'll try to attack us, but he really can't or do really any damage to us because we just killed his strength of his new Age of Compassion. Maybe acquiring certain items like his Great Rune or even Melania's Remembrance could trigger a different ending cutscene or dialogues with Mikola just for the DLC. There are no three stage fights in all of Elden Ring, I believe, which feels really weird. I was expecting at least one. At the end of this boss fight, you'll receive an emote called Let Us Go Together. I feel like it would have been really cool if we wear Mikola's crown and use this emote in front of the withered arm by the cocoon. It would let the hand fall slightly or make the crown glow golden. This would just be a little thing that shows us some type of relationship between Mikola and this body besides it just being the entrance to the Shadow Realm, which I really feel like should have had a cutscene. It does feel abrupt that we just touch the hand, it fades to black, and then we are just there. I would really like to see how we end up there. Were we transported? Did we just fall asleep and wake up somewhere else like we do a few times in the base game? Just something that gives some context as to how this works instead of it just abruptly happening. Another connection between the base game and the DLC that I really would have enjoyed to see is if you kill Mikola before finding Melania, she just doesn't wake up when you enter the boss room at first. And to not miss out on this boss fight, you could touch her hand to enter into a dream state that she's in where you can fight her in an altered version of the original boss room, similar to how we fight Fortisax by touching Fia. Maybe we even get a different version of Melania where she's not completely affected by Scarlet Rot, or she's in a dream state where she's dreaming that she isn't affected by Scarlet Rot would be really interesting. 
There could just be a lot more added here in terms of lore and environmental storytelling by making the dream state maybe in a deep purple color palette, giving a little nod to St. Trina, just adding a little bit of depth to Trina's lore and explaining how Melania has just sat here for such a long time in the I dreamt for so long dialogue that she says. And vice versa, if we defeat Melania before reaching Mikola, I think we should be able to summon her spirit to fight against him. Leading on from this, her realizing that she was potentially under his charm, and when it breaks, she helps us try and stop him from achieving true godhood. Or if she was never under a charm, she helps us stop Mikola from divesting everything he once was just like St. Trina wanted. There definitely could have been multiple reasons as to why Melania would help us stop him from becoming a god, and if Moog and Radon's body and spirit end up in the Realm of Shadow, I don't know why this wouldn't be the case for Melania, and then we can summon her spirit against Mikola. I, I think that would be amazing. Like a rematch between Melania and Radon at the Gate of Divinity would be the most badass thing I could think of in this situation. And I know everybody wanted the last boss to be Godwin. There were lots of lore reasons as to why this would be the case. Mikola seemed to have a good relationship with Godwin, much more so than Radon. The base game never alluded that Mikola had some weird relationship with Radon, but it is what it is. But I think it would have been really Really cool that maybe if you fight Fia's companions using Godwin's Death Knight armor set, like while you're wearing it, it would trigger the husk of Godwin's eyes to track you while you're walking around the arena. I think this would be such a nice nod to show us that he's still in there somewhere. He can still recognize things that are around him, but just having something very small like that would just be such a nice nod to the player that what they've done in the Realm of Shadow has such an impact on the lands between as well. Speaking of an impact on the world, after defeating Mesmer and going back to Grand Am Hornscent, she will tell you, please, I ask thee, allow thyself some rest none of the tower would dare interfere, and if one should, I shall see to them myself. I think this would have been the perfect opportunity to actually change how enemies in Bellarat engage with the player. Like, if the player is wearing the Divine Beast head, no one in the tower will attack the player. Possibly even have those enemies kneel down in gratitude toward the player when passing by them. This would help the player feel like they actually made a difference toward the Horn Sense Revenge, as well as an ironic situation, since you are the Tarnished of Queen Merica, who started the crusade against the Horn Scent in the first place. On top of this, it would also be interesting that if we wear the Divine Beast Helm around Omens or Misbegotten in the Lands Between, they don't attack us either. Maybe even Morgoth has some dialogue alluding to the Helm, mentioning it, degrading it, anything would be interesting here. Speaking of Morgoths and the thrones around the base of the Erd Tree during this cutscene, I think it would have been interesting to have maybe a shadowed version of Mesmer's throne that only comes up in this cutscene if you defeated Mesmer before going to Morgoth. Morgoth doesn't even have to reference it or talk about it or anything, but we would be able to see it and know exactly what it's alluding to. And talking about Mesmer and who we believe to be his sister Melina, we should be able to give Mesmer's kindling to Melina, in my opinion, if we defeat him before burning the Erd Tree. Maybe this would help trigger her memories of her purpose she's been seeking throughout the game. This just seems like a perfect opportunity for more Words of Merica moments with Melina. Another example of this is we should be able to show Melina the golden braid we find in the Hinterland, which would be another opportunity for Melina to regain memories and the Words of Merica moments that would just give us more context, dialogue, really anything on the intentions of Merica, Mesmer, the entire family dynamic, and everything that happened before we enter the Lands Between. Melina saying anything, literally anything about her brother, her mother, or even remembering her purpose once you sit at a side of grace after obtaining Mesmer's kindling. These are very simple, easy ways to make the player feel like they are actually making a difference in the world they're playing in instead of just being two completely disconnected worlds. That's the main point of this entire video. Along with this, I feel like Jaren, Radon's right-hand man, should have something to say about you having the remembrance of a god and a lord. Maybe if you show him this, he'll have some new dialogue expanding on Radon's vow to Mikola. 
which really doesn't make a lot of sense to me yet. But just more context from somebody who knew Radon before everything went down, whether or not Radon wanted this vow with Mikola, maybe Jaren's opinion on the vow in general, something here I think was honestly necessary and would just be an easy add to the game in my opinion. Just a few more random examples. I think that if we wear Rolana's armor in front of her sister Renala, it maybe triggers some new dialogue with her that you could also convey to Ronnie potentially. It always feels weird that Ronnie doesn't even mention her mother Renala at all in any of her dialogue, even though she set up a trap protecting her that we as the player can trigger. This also seems like another great opportunity to just add more dialogue, more context without having to change the dynamics or mechanics that were already in the game. Just more dialogue is all I'm asking for, but it, it's a Souls game, so I, I guess I shouldn't expect that. Speaking of Rolana, I think her boss location should be switched to the main gate of the shadow keep where we fight the golden hippo and just put the golden hippo out into the open world somewhere this boss needs more space already there's so many camera issues they're rampant with the golden hippo boss but rolana just standing in her boss arena seems out of place to me especially since the fog gate is visible and accessible from the back before you fight her and you can walk up to this fog gate but nothing will happen it feels really out of place here or at least awkward for the player if they don't go directly through castle Ensis. it would make sense that she's protecting mesmer and working with mesmer if she is at the main gate of the shadow keep i think the contrast of her colors in this dark background with merica's statue looming over her especially when she jumps up with the twin moon attacks that she can use i think this boss arena makes way more sense for her to be in just replace a castle Ensis boss with really anything else i'm, I'm I'm not sure but the golden hippo should not be here this is the worst boss in the dlc by far just because of the rampant camera issues that occur with this boss that are completely unavoidable similar to rolana i feel like romania is slightly out of place where she is just because she's just standing in her ruined church just waiting for you to walk in just feels a bit awkward. Obviously, I think just a starting cutscene, especially for a Remembrance boss, would be very useful here. Just to give some background, some context, some just some extra dialogue from her would be great. I actually love the Romania boss fight. I also love Rolana's boss fight, just to clarify that. But just something that adds a bit more environmental storytelling to both of these characters, especially since they're Remembrance bosses, would make a lot of sense in my eyes. Last thing I want to talk about is the Abyssal Woods. I know a lot of people don't like that you have to go into these large open areas and walk around because Torrent's too scared to come out, but putting a large frenzied dragon somewhere in the Abyssal Woods just sort of stalking around like you can hear it through the fog would have been nice to just have another version of a dragon that isn't one of the six ghost flame dragons that we can find in the DLC. Because they can't use Torrent, the player would be able to sneak past or fight the frenzied dragon in an otherwise empty space without it feeling too out of place. And along with this, I think adding a backyard area to Midra's Mance, possibly a graveyard, or more examples of executions by the Inquisitors, I even feel like this would have been a much better location for Nanaya's body to be, instead of just right outside Midra's boss fight, she would be outside, maybe surrounded by the last remaining flowers that we can see in the painting near the entrance of Midra's Mance, similar to how we can find a lot more lore on Merica in the Hinterland, that just being sort of a side area that's difficult to find, but you still can, would add so much to Midra's Mance and the Abyssal Woods in general, and that's really everything I could think of. I'm sure I could think of tons of more examples of this. And if you guys have ideas down in the comments, please leave them. I'd love to read them. Any ideas that you think would work or maybe everything I've said in this video wouldn't work. And I'm sure there's lots of lore reasons as to why they can't work or shouldn't work or whatever. These are just things that I wish were in the game that would have just made me feel like a, a bit more of a connection between the DLC and the base game. That's my main issue with the DLC. I love everything that we got. I think it's incredible, but I could not shake this feeling of disconnection between the base game and the DLC. Maybe I'm alone in this feeling. I've talked to my Discord a little bit about it and they seem to feel the same way. So I felt a bit more comfortable making this video. If you like this type of video again, make sure to like, subscribe, let me know in general, and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.